All right, so in the previous video, we have imported the project and we have ran the app. We know how it looks like and we know that it behaves correctly. So functionally, the app is fine. Now, let's look at the code and try to understand what's happening behind the scenes and how we can refactor the code, how we can make it more clean, more readable and actually more maintainable. Now, we have this method here called show restaurant, which is in the on create method of the activity. So this is what we do when the activity first shows up, when the screen turns on. And in this method, we can see that there are a lot of stuff happening. So if we scroll down, we can see here that this method is pretty long. It has a lot of lines. So we keep scrolling and we keep scrolling and it's pretty long. Now, many of you might say that, hey, Caitlin, we have to split this method into many classes. We have to use a repository for parsing the restaurants that happens here as the first stage. We have to use a presenter or a view model to prepare the data for presentation for the view, which is the activity for us now. We have to use use cases or separate business objects for our business logic. And I really agree with you and I'm really happy that you think this way. But the scope of this activity or this video here that we are looking at is and this class is to focus on the clean uh, aspect of the code, how we can refactor it. So actually, in one of the videos in this class, we are going to split the logic into multiple classes. But the idea of this class is not to go into the separation of concerns. We'll have a separate class about that, a separate class about presentation patterns and how we can um, analyze all types of logic and where we should really uh, put them in a view model, in activity, in a use case, in a repository and so on. Okay, so let's get back at the code with this distinction made and we can see that we use our Java to get the restaurants to make the API call to a client. We really don't care about the RxJava uh, syntax. Just don't worry about it. I mean, it's not really that important. Uh, it's just a request that is done on the background thread and is observed on the main thread. So we can see the response on the main thread. Um, we can see right off the bat that is in, in this first stage of parsing the restaurants, which basically means that we get the response from the server and we do this kind of parsing. We get all the information that we need in a domain object called restaurant here, which basically encapsulates all the information that we need. It's a more friendly object. So in this first stage that really should be in a separate method or a separate class, uh, we can see that we have some kind of bad naming here for the restaurants, a lot of uh, nested ifs and for loops. So the code is not really that clean here. Also, if we move on to the next step of filtering the restaurants, we can see that we have this kind of business condition here that the closing hour should be less than six. Again, this kind of looks hard coded, don't worry. This is not a, really a production application. But um, after filtering it, we can see that we sort the restaurants and we have a very long method or a very long logic actually of calculating the distance between the user and the restaurant. And again, we create another list here, as you can see, um, I mean, filtered restaurants, and then we do all of this weird logic. We have a log, so we should remove this. Again, this kind of filtering and sorting should be in a different method or a class. We are going to do that, don't worry. We sort the restaurants, as you can see here with the Java feature of collections by distance, as close as possible. Those are the restaurants that should be displayed first. And then we prepare the restaurants to display. I mean, this kind of logic is similar to the mapping that we did initially, uh, the parsing that we did um, into actually transforming the information from the server to our convenient form. The restaurant display item is again a convenient form, encapsulates some kind of presentation logic here with the name of the restaurant should be displayed in this form, this distance, and so on. Finally, we uh, get the adapter and we check it. Uh, if it's null or not, again, this is something that shouldn't be happening here and we have a separate video about this. We set the restaurants and we set a click listener with a uh, object from Kotlin, uh, having the callback here. So again, this kind of logic should be probably in the presenter, but we are going to 
maybe place it initially in a separate method and then in a separate class. So we know that this method is pretty long, but there are other issues with the code. We have uh, a log here, we have a commented line here. The code doesn't really seem to be very clean. It's pretty nested. It's pretty hard to follow, to understand. And um, we have uh, that null check issue with the adapter, uh, which is here. And again, this is a big issue. Uh, if you look on the left here in the package explorer, project explorer, as you want to call it, all the classes are really mixed all together here. They don't have any kind of package structuring. And one of the videos is going to be about this. We are going to use a feature package or a layer package. We are going to look and see which one is better. So we are going to learn how to structure the packages to have a more scalable approach uh, if we have more screens and so. Um, and also if we go into the adapter, and I really encourage you to pause the video at some point and just look through the classes just um, the way I am, so you can understand a bit better the logic. I mean, the adapter seems kind of fun. It's pretty simple. It sets the restaurant name and the distance in an on bind view holder method, which I'm pretty sure that you are accustomed to. But there is some ugly logic that is related to the decision of the restaurant type. So if you remember when I showed you the application demo in the previous video, we were displaying different texts for uh, different restaurant types. So if it's take you have to display a text uh, and the type has to be in a particular color and the drawable for that uh, fab icon had a different drawable from the eating and drive through. And you can see that this logic is pretty duplicated here. We just copy pasted this. And I see this kind of code in a lot of projects. And it's really not a very nice approach. And for this, we are going to be using enums for this kind of static content that is dependent on a type or a scenario. And we are going to really handle this problem and really simplify the code here. So yeah, I guess that this kind of sums it up. We are going to do a lot of stuff. We are going to learn shortcuts, how to refactor the code, as you know. And the main goal of this is actually, as you can see, removing the imports, which are really redundant here. The main goal is to make this class more clean, to split the logic and have a much more maintainable and easier to read class. Now, Let's start with the actual splitting of the show restaurants. In the next video, we are going to split this show restaurants method with a lot of steps that it has into multiple smaller methods so that we can really have a closer or a better overview of what each method does and not have this kind of Goliath method that does everything, which is worse in terms of debugging. So when we have the goal set, let's go.